All right. Okay. Yeah. So welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us for the Gunsmoke tutorial this evening. We've got Zyre, who's going to be walking us through this game. Say hello, Zyre. How's it going, everybody? All right. And we've got a couple of us here. Uh, the smaller screens on the right are a few people who are learning the game. I'm Fiesel. Uh, Mythical9 is also here. Hello. And we've got Toad. Hello, hello. So while Zyre explains to us how to do each of these levels, we're going to try to follow along and do uh, as he describes and see how we do with this. Um, the goal for the big tw first four levels of this game, um, up to the ninja. Yep. So it's not the whole game, fortunately, but I think you get enough of a taste uh, for the game after playing uh, just four levels of it. Yeah, the fifth and sixth stages are... They don't throw really anything new at you uh, after the fourth stage, but the fifth and sixth, fifth and sixth stages just throw a ton of enemies at you. Mm -hmm. and so, the, it, as far as the goal for the uh, twenty NES race, this is actually a very good one. Yeah, I think so. About how long do you expect that this will take people? Oh, this is where uh, things can get tricky because I. Uh, Gunsmoke is a shmup, which means that it's a vertical shmup, meaning that your vertical movement speed is fixed. Um, you can't really speed it up, uh, and there is one little special condition that you have to uh, fulfill in order to spawn the bosses, and that is you have to get their wanted posters. So really, uh, I would say each stage you're looking at... I, don't, I want to say probably about five minutes per stage. So we're looking at about a 20, maybe 30 minute uh, uh, goal, game time, uh, okay. for this one. All right. So, and I see Mythical is already up onto the third stage there. <laughs> I think he's had some practice beforehand. I had this game as a kid, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. And I believe yeah, Toad has had... had some practice on this as well, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there... Anyone who has had this game or played this game as a kid will most likely have very fond memories of this game. Most likely. I can't guarantee it for everybody. I had fond memories of it. Fond memories so. of the first level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the right. first level was always great. Okay. So what's the structure as far as, like, continues and lives? How does that go in this? Okay, you start off with, if I recall correctly, you start off with three lives. Mm -hmm. Um and when you pull up the status screen, we'll, and I'll show you guys the status screen uh, eventually, but in the status screen, it shows you the number of spare lives you have, not counting the one that you're current, currently playing as. So you could actually show up with zero lives on it, if I recall correctly, mm -hmm. and uh, you'd still be, you know, you'd, you'd still be able to play your game. Uh, so you start off with three. You can only have a maximum of four spare lives, so a total of five lives. Uh, all together. That's the highest you can have. You can't have any more than that. Hmm. That's interesting to limit the number of lives you get. That's unusual uh -huh. for an S game. Um, okay. As far as continues, I believe you get three continues. I could be wrong. Uh, it's been so long since I game over this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at at right. least not without <laughs> wanting to quit. <laughs> but it's a fixed number of continues and it's non-zero is what we know about it. Pretty much, yes. Okay, when you die, do you uh, start right where you died? Or... From a checkpoint, what's the deal with that? You basically start the... Uh, well, oh, when you die... Yeah, I was thinking game over. Right. Um, when you die, you pretty much start right where you left off. Mm -hmm. um, there is an animation that takes about five seconds. Um, and uh, it basically shows you die in, the screen fades out, shows you your lives, and then it fades back in. But you pick up, you pick up pretty much right where you left off. Okay. And to continue, so, we'll go back to the beginning of the level, I take it. I believe so, yes. All right. Yeah. That is and bad, bad Breaks is saying 15 minutes is a decent time for this. Full game is around 25, so I, that sounds about right. 15 minutes is a decent time to shoot for. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So. Um, All right. I think that's uh, some... In oh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think that's a good enough introduction we should go ahead and just jump right into the game all right let's go into the first stage we'll break these down one stage at a time here mm -hmm. okay uh just to give you guys some backstory 
uh, you are just this lone gunman. Like, they don't even give you a name. And the town of Hicksville is looking for... Has, has been uh, brought... Has been uh, basically subjugated by this gang. And so you just come into town riding in on your horse and you're there to free it. So... Just like in any other shmup, you're gonna, it's gonna move uh, vertically just on its own. Mm -hmm. And something that you may be noticing right now is the controls. The controls are a bit different. If you press the A button, you're gonna be shooting your two guns to the right at an angle. If you shoot, if you press the B button, you're shooting to the left at an angle. Okay. If you press them both at the same time, you'll shoot straight forward. Oh wow. Okay. Shooting forward. Got okay. it. So that's one of the first things you're gonna want to know. Second second thing is that um, your first enemy is going to start appearing right off the bat as you guys already seen they're the green grunts as I call them uh, they literally are have no health one shot they're down okay okay and as you're and as anyone can visually see you want to open up the barrels because they contain your power-ups and they're right there so I'm just gonna play along a little bit open up these barrels and you see the first of the power-ups is the boots. What the boots do is they will actually uh, speed you up. Now, the, well, along with the boots, there's one other upgrade. It's the rifle, and that actually increases your range. And what uh, you can hold up to four sets of boots and four rifles. Mm -hmm. Though you don't really see that much of an upgrade uh, difference beyond the first time that you collect them. What ends up happening is if you die, you lose one level in each of them. So having the extra extra sets actually helps you maintain the upgrades even after you die. So you'll just want to collect them. And then if you've maxed, them, maxed both of them out, every time you collect a set of boots or you collect a rifle after that, it's worth another 100 points. Okay. Points, of course, not doing anything for us in this goal, so forget about points. Actually, you're wrong in that one. Whoa, I'm wrong. Okay, so tell me what the points do for you. <laughs> <laughs> your points are actually going to be very useful uh, especially for this goal in particular um, in a speed run it really won't matter but for this for this goal to help make things easier for beginners and people who just want to make it a bit more uh, safe to make it through the game you're going to want points as much as possible even. Um, so you have the money bags they drop points every time that you kill a foe they drop points like this red guy right here who likes to throw dynamite he'll be worth two or Excuse me, he's worth 200 points. You can collect the dynamite that he throws as long as you get it before it blows up, but it only gives you 10 points. So don't worry about him. Okay. Um, so I just collected a rifle going through. I mean, the first stage is very straightforward. It's going to pretty much give you the tutorial, help you get used to the game, the mechanics, the controls. Now, you, when you come up to against the fence, if you go straight up against it, you can actually shoot over it, and the enemies can't shoot you. So if you take, so if you're looking on my screen here mm -hmm. in just a moment, uh, you'll see that I'll, I'm able to get right up to the fence, and I can shoot over it like that. So you can just shoot over it. Oh, I just died. Not very smooth of me, but no. I died. Well, you weren't really so you can far, see right? I, I, I picked up right where I left off. The PAL destroys all enemies on screen, just as you imagined. You'll typically want to save it for either a bunch of strong enemies or just a ton of them. We're going through. Now, something I saw that you guys had already encountered was the uh, townsperson. The townspeople serve two roles. They are your stores. Uh, and they are where you spend your points. Your points are, in all actuality, they are the money that you've collected for defeating the gang members. And so you want to spend, you'll want to spend your points at these stores. And the, and the way to enter the store is just by running into the townspeople, as you guys have already done so far. And in the store, the, they, the, there are two different stores. There's your gun store and then a supply store. And, they, and the townspeople will always alternate whether they're a gun store or a supply store. So the first, however, each stage, on each stage, the first person you meet is always the gun store. It doesn't matter what their sprite looks like, they are always the gun store. Okay. And then it alternates from there. So gun store supply, gun supply, gun supply. Okay. Okay. Inside the gun store, you've got four, they offer four different guns. They've got the shotgun, 
the machine gun, the magnum, and a smart bomb. Um, shotgun is just like what you would imagine. It's a spread. It, it shoots your bullets and, and shoots five bullets in a spread pattern, much like the spread gun from Contra. Uh, machine gun is exactly like it sounds like. It's rapid fire bullets. Uh, magnum is very powerful. It is actually one of the strongest guns in the game. However, you're very limited on your ammo. And as you can see, it's also fairly expensive. The smart bomb is unique and it's probably going to be the most useful weapon in the game. Uh, you can purchase the shotgun at this point in the game if you like. However, I would recommend that you hold off because the smart bomb is actually going to be your best bet, especially considering it has a hidden feature to it that will actually save a lot of beginners in this game. So if you want to get the shotgun at this point, I you can get it, but I wouldn't recommend it. So to leave the store, you just hit the select button and then it lets you continue on. Now, speaking of the select button, you can press it anytime and you can pull up your inventory. It kind of pauses the game as well, it has some cool music with it. And you can see your current upgrades, so how many pairs of boots you have, how many rifles you have, your number of extra lives, and it lets you select your weapons that you've bought at this point. Wait, what's that middle thing? That's a gun? There's boots? Uh, there's a... what is that? There's. Oh, that's a rifle power. Oh, that's a rifle power. Up. Okay. Yeah, that that just that just extends extends the range of your bullets. And you said that you only need uh, one of them. You really only need one to get maximum range uh, to get the, to reap the benefits of those power ups. However, you want the extras because when you die, right. you lose one of those power ups. But as long as you have one, you know you you keep the pack, you keep your abilities with it. I see. So. Having those extras is nice, cause, so if you die, you don't have to worry about, oh, where am I going to get another set of boots or another rifle again? And then as you can see, you have unlimited ammo with the normal gun, and then if you had bought the shotgun, the machine gun, or the magnum, you'd, or the smart bomb, you'd be able to see how much ammo you have for each of them. So... Anyways, just going to keep going on. You want to open... During the first stage, you don't have to worry about getting anything bad from the barrels. So you just go ahead and open up the barrels, shoot all the guys. So you, okay, okay, you definitely want to get all the barrels and collect all the whatever comes out of them. Yeah, and then what you can see on my screen uh, here in just a moment is a horse power-up that comes from the barrel here on the right. The horse is going to be your best friend. Seriously. Um, you want to collect the horse as often as you can because the horse can take anywhere from two to four hits. Typically it's about three hits. Um, which basically means that you're no longer one shot, you're dead. You can take a couple of hits, and then your horse dies, and you can continue on. I see. So horse is just like a little bit of extra life for you. Yep. Now, if you're looking for speed, you want to collect the horse as low to the bottom as possible, because once you've collected it, the entire screen pauses while the horse runs up and you jump on it. So you want to... Uh, collect the horse as low as possible to the bottom of the screen. Oh, that's interesting. So you delay, oh, you, have, you delay till it's at the bottom and then you collect it. I see. And you get yes, a little boost. That, yeah, that that will save you a little bit of time. That's one of the few time savers there is in this in this game. Otherwise, if you collect it up near the top, you have to wait for the horse to come running all the way up to the top and then you jump on it. And that, and that can waste up to about two seconds. It's oh, not much, but it, it can save time. Hmm. Now, something that you'll always want to do is you'll just want to constantly be shooting because every once in a while you may come across some hidden items. And they'll make the same sound as if you were destroying a barrel. So I'm coming up on this. So I just ran into the second townsperson. He's a supply store. He offers ammunition, a horse, and a wanted poster. Now, I don't have enough money to get anything other than ammunition, which is fine because already, I'm already on my horse. In most stages, you can get... Well, not in most stages. In... For this goal, you can get the horse uh, in every stage if you want, but you're not it's not going to be absolutely necessary. Uh, but it is just that nice bit of extra insurance. You want to get the wanted poster, however, you don't need to buy it in the store. Unless unless you feel like you're not going to be able to find it, uh, 
you can buy it from the store, but I'm going to show you guys where the wanted posters are hidden so you can collect them so you can trigger the boss. Yeah, it was 20 or 20,000, no, 200,000 or something like that. It was more than I had at the time, so it doesn't seem like yeah. that's the way to go. Yeah, I've been killing just about every single uh, foe that I've come across. I've only got 10,500 and the wanted poster is 20,000. Now, the way that the game works is if you don't have the wanted poster when you reach the spot where the boss would spawn, then you end up going through the entire level again it just loops and the game and the level just keeps looping until you find the wanted poster okay so if you're looking for so if you're looking for speed that wanted poster is your highest priority all right so i'm just going to keep going on here are First the barrels wanted poster... sorry go on so, sorry i was going to ask if oh, the yeah. barrels always give you the same thing every time yes the They're barrels do random. give you the same Yes, they are not random. Um, they do give you the same thing every time. And if you look on Game Facts, um, if you look up this game on Game Facts, you will actually find uh, maps that were made that will show you where every barrel is located and what is in every barrel mm -hmm. throughout the level. Throughout the level. I assume it'll so, also tell you where the wanted poster is too, which is probably the most important thing to know. Exactly. It will tell you where the wanted poster is. Now, I'm on. I'm at the point where this is where the wanted poster is hidden. You see this barrel that's right here on this blue building. It The wanted poster is actually in a hidden spot that you have to shoot right behind the barrel. So I'm just going to go ahead and shoot it. And there it is. It just appeared. At least it just appeared for me. Give it a second and it'll appear on the, on the screen. Yep, there it is. Okay. So you get... So you want that wanted poster to appear... You collect it, and that will allow the boss to be triggered. Now you'll you'll see those blue guys that bounce around. They can't. They will shoot. You, they will shoot at you when they jump. Otherwise, you don't need to worry about them unless you run into them. But they do take multiple hits to destroy. You'll also see that I've got this guy that has the that is looking like he's carrying a cannon, bald-headed red guy with a cannon. He'll shoot out three shots. Just avoid him. He takes like three hits, and he goes down. So overall. All these enemies so far aren't that much of a threat, as long as you're careful. Okay, so I just uncovered another hidden item right here. Um, okay. What is what this uh, item is, is it's a blue pinwheel. Uh, it's got an official name. I think Myth, uh, Mythical knows the exact name of it. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it but it looks like a... Yashichi. Yashichi, that's it. So this one's a blue Yashichi. The blue one grants you invulnerability. So you, so if you come across it, it's usually a good idea to collect it. Uh, while you're invulnerable, obviously you can't be killed. You can uh, run into enemies and you'll just destroy them. Then they can't shoot you, and it's very nice to have. It lasts, a, I want to say, about five seconds, five or ten seconds. So it's not very long. So you want to collect it. You'll want to collect it kind of at a more critical moment but what's a critical moment is completely up to different people so i just collected it i'm going through now there's a red one that shows up shortly after the blue one the red ones are actually extra lives so if, so if you want to play it safe you'll want to collect the red ones there's at least one red one in every level so you'll want to uh, get them as often as you can. And don't forget, if you have, during this first stage, those fences and even the water barrels are very useful. Okay, so for me, the screen just stopped scrolling. Um, now that the screen stopped scrolling, that tells me that I have just triggered the boss. If, the, if I didn't have the wanted poster at this point, then it would continue on and the level would loop and then I have to go through the entire level again until I found the wanted poster. If you wanted to, you can just keep looping the first level and, and build up your, your points or your money and you uh, can uh, eventually buy the guns that you want from the store. But as this is going to be a little bit of an emphasis on speed, you want to just get the wanted posters the first time through so you don't have to loop through the entire stage again. So, okay, yeah, the wanted poster. You just look for that blue building on the left side with just a single barrel sitting in the front of it, and you want to shoot the yep. spot right above that single barrel. Yep. 
So I triggered the boss. Now, the thing you have to understand about the bosses in this game is that no matter how much you shoot them, they are only vulnerable when they want to be vulnerable. And that usually is whenever they are shooting at you. So it, the ve best way to describe it is you have to think of it like it was a good old Western showdown that was taking place at high noon <laughs> where you, know, you have both people who will – you have uh, both gunmen who will just – draw and first one to shoot gets hurt right kind of the same thing going on here the, pretty much the only time that any of the bosses are going to be vulnerable is right when they are about to attack there's one or two small exceptions but it's generally when they are attacking is when they're vulnerable hmm. so the best best advice i can give is just pelt him with bullets eventually you'll hit him the bars at the top of the screen each bar represents one hit so I've already hit him once, so he's lost one, so I only need to hit him four more times. And then this guy goes down. Now, this guy's gimmick is that after he gets hit, he crawls on his stomach, and you can't hurt him while he's doing that. But eventually, he'll get up, and you just keep shooting him. I like to just stay on one side and shoot in one direction, just dodge the small fry. You can, uh, sorry to, but you can Go manipulate ahead. this first boss. Um... If you sit in front of him and he shoots at you, he'll get up right after that. After you knock him down, like I'm going to show right here. All right. If he shoots at you, he'll get up right away. So just kind of stand in front of him just for a second. Let him shoot, and then he'll get up again. Yeah. So there's there may be a bunch of little tricks like that that, like I was I wasn't even really that much aware of that. <laughs> I just keep shooting him, and then whenever he gets up, I shoot him down again. That's basically how it works out. So. You beat the boss, you see his wanted poster that you saw at the beginning of the stage, and you shoot some bullets in it and you collect the bounty for it. And that's basically the layout of what every stage is going to look like. Okay. I'm testing this manipulation thing out. It seems like, yeah, he does stay down longer if you're farther away from him. If you get close to him, then the next time he shoots, right afterwards, he'll come back up. So yeah, staying close to the boss makes him get up sooner. That's good to know, because this is the only spot that you can really optimize. If you're going to be saving or losing time anywhere, it's going to be these boss fights. Yep. The boss fights are literally the only way that you could speed things up. And so by learning how to manipulate the bosses, that's going to be the key. Okay. And so, thankfully, the first boss, he, like I said, the first, the first level is more of a tutorial level, just getting you used to how the game works and everything. Uh, the second stage is where they start adding a few elements into it. So, uh, beginning of the second stage, the boulders, uh, they're not going to throw out a whole lot of enemies at you, but they are going to introduce you to the fact that there are elements that you can't walk around or even shoot past. So you have to start learning how to maneuver the environment at the same time. Cactuses don't hurt you when you run into them, apparently? Nope, they don't. They're non-prickly cactuses. So you're just going to go along, keep opening barrels. But you are going to have to, you are going to want to be aware of your surroundings as they, the grunts will start shooting at you more and more often. Will the spawns so, always be the same? Are the spawns just triggered by when the screen hits a certain spot, the enemy always appears? Pretty much. Okay, pretty so much. you can learn these patterns. Yeah, yeah so you can learn the patterns. You can you can learn the patterns. Okay. So I just ran into the first townsperson um, for this stage, and like I said earlier, the first townsperson of every stage is the gotcha. gun store. Hmm. And so I'm at so I'm here on the gun store now. As I said earlier, feel free to buy the shotgun, the machine gun, or the magnum uh, as your heart desires. Me myself, I don't bother with any one of the three of them. Instead, I buy the smart bomb. Okay. Um. So, uh, you just press the uh, A button to purchase, and then you press select to get out of the menu. Uh, Smart Bomb is very nice because a lot uh, you would think that it's just a one shot and it destroys everything on the screen. Well, yeah, you'd be right. But there's a very hidden a, uh, element to it that, frankly, not that many people really paid much attention to or could use. 
So I went ahead and bought the smart bomb. I'm quitting out of the store now. And I'm bringing up my menu. Now you'll notice that with the smart bomb, I have... Or, or at least here in, in a moment. I guess I gotta wait for it to show up on, on your screen. But mm. uh, you'll notice that the smart bomb has no ammunition to it. It's sitting at a big fat zero. That's because what you've when you purchase guns, all you're doing is you're purchasing the gun itself. You're not purchasing ammo for it. So you want to per so you're gonna have to collect ammo for it or purchase it from the supply store. Thankfully, once you've purchased your first gun. The enemies will start dropping ammunition, and they tend to drop it at a fairly regular pace. However, if you run, when you're using one of your guns, if you run out of ammunition, then you lose the gun too. That's one of the key things you're going to have to remember. So if you love your shotgun, if you love your machine gun, if you love your magnum, uh, be aware of how much ammo you're using, and if you get down to one, stop using it and collect more ammunition. Otherwise, if you use that last bullet with that gun, the gun disappears and you have to wait until the next gun shop before <laughs> you can purchase it again. Wow. Okay. That's that's uh, good to know. Um, All right. that, when I've been playing this game, hmm. when you run out of ammo, you just switch back to your regular gun. you got to pick up more ammo again to get it. But if you die with it equipped, that's when you lose it. At least from... That's true. Yeah, that is true. And that, I might be thinking that this... Uh, the, the smart bone is just unique in that sense. So I could be wrong about the regular guns. Like I said, I don't use the regular guns that much. I just stick to the normal guns. Unlimited <laughs> ammunition. They have a decent range and, you know, pretty good coverage. Um, again, your mileage may vary. So it's completely up to you guys which one you want to do. So for now, I'm going to stick with the normal gun. And I'm just going to keep going until I get some ammunition here. But, so, the blue guy that I just killed dropped some ammunition. Uh, so it'll show up there in just a few seconds. Right. But are, um, are certain so, guys more likely to drop ammo than others? I believe the blue guys that bounce are are the most likely to drop ammunition. I can't verify that though. I haven't play tested it that much. Um, but the thing about so when you collect the ammunition, like if I pull up my uh, guns, now my smart bomb has one ammo to it, and that's the maximum amount of ammo that it can carry, is just the one. So I highlight, so I bring it up, I've highlighted, then I just press select again, and now I've got the smart bomb equipped. The thing about the smart bomb is that you'll still be able to shoot your regular gun with it, however, as soon as you get hit, the smart bomb goes off, and it destroys all enemies on screen except for bosses. And that's the hidden feature that not that many people paid attention to. They just got the smart bomb and they thought, oh, maybe it didn't trigger. And then all of a sudden it randomly triggers. But they didn't pay attention to the fact that it, it triggers when you get hit. So you don't die and instead the smart bomb goes off. So it, getting the smart bomb is actually to your benefit as it gives you one extra hit. Much like the horse does. I see. But you're going to take an intentional hit in order to use it at a certain spot? Or is this just like an nope. extra free hit that you're I, using whenever? I... I use it just as an extra hit, so uh, that if I just happen to get hit, um, then I'm safe, I don't die, and I can continue on. Mm -hmm. Plus, it, it has a nice benefit of just clearing all the uh, small fry from the screen. So that's okay. probably the best. That, that's my use for it. Some people have, try, have intentionally gotten hit at certain points to clear the screen. Again, personal preference as to which you do. So. All right. I see. So an optimal speed run wouldn't bother to go into the shop and buy that, but you know, for the sake of a, a race, it makes sense to just spend a couple seconds to get a free hit. Yeah. Now, short shortly after, uh, you'll see on my screen that I unlocked that I uncovered a. Uh, I keep calling them pinwheels, so I'm just sorry, guys. I'm gonna keep calling them pinwheels. That. I covered a blue pinwheel and then a red one. And then I ran all the way around to the other side of the pillars to um, to show you guys where the wanted poster is. It, it the game kind of tricks you with this because you see the barrel, you shoot, and if you sh and the one on the right's lower to it, so you go for that one naturally, and it shows up as a one up. So you want you're inclined to go towards that when really the wanted poster is on the other side of the barrel on the left. So you can still get both as I just did, but it. it you have to kind of make it a priority to move over to the other side as much as possible. Right. The red pinwheels are definitely good things to get because an extra life is going to help you. you know, in terms yeah, of extra lives safety. are going to help you, especially in the fourth stage. All right. Um, 
Now, you'll notice that, there, that the barrel that I had shot that was in front of the wanted poster contained a skull, a uh, bull skull or a cow skull, whatever you want to think of it as. If I may make a suggestion, do not collect it. Um, I made that mistake as a kid quite often. I would just get the skull thinking, oh, maybe it's worth points, and then it wasn't worth points, and I didn't really see anything else that it affected me by. It actually, what it actually does is it actually reduces your upgrades by one. It actually removes a set of boots and a rifle that you have stored up. All right, so don't so, get the skull. So if you want to keep the power-ups for future lives, you want to avoid the skulls. A bison skull, yeah. But whatever you think that skull is, it could be an alien skull. It's a steer. Or... Oh, I just got it. I just collected okay. it. it... And if you, if you just collect it, you're okay. That's why they have that. That's why you have the four sets, is so that you have the extras. Okay. So. So that's where the wanted poster is. When you see those two pillars in the middle of the screen, wanted poster is above that barrel that's on the left side of it. But I highly recommend getting the pinwheel, the red pinwheel on the right side, because a live a one up will be very helpful. Yeah, you will. You'll have plenty of time to be able to run over to the other side. Especially as long as you keep shooting in front of you to destroy any small grunts that appear while you're moving over there. So, and if you happen to miss the poster, it's okay. By now, you should have plenty of money, and the supply uh, shop is right there, and it has the wanted poster as well. There so you go. if you do miss, so if you do miss the post, so if you miss the poster, uh, getting it free right after the barrel, you can get it from um, the wanted poster. Uh, you can get the wanted poster from the supply shop. So, and the, okay. you can get the horse here as well if you want to get uh, have that few extra hits. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that just because why not? I have the extra money. So now I've got my horse. I have the smart bomb equipped. Now the smart bomb and the horse do stack. And the priority actually goes to the horse. It will actually destroy the horse first before it triggers the smart bomb, if I'm remembering correctly. I didn't. I That's tried right. it out earlier. And I'm trying to. Re I believe it was the horse first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you so you don't have to worry about your smart bomb going off accidentally. Your horse can take a couple hits, and then right when they think they have got you, you just blow them up, and it's it's a beautiful thing. Okay. And then don't be afraid to get POWs whenever you seed them. It's up to you to, to decide when's best to use them. Otherwise, you just work just like in the first stage. Uh, like I said, it doesn't introduce too many new elements to you. The enemies are all the same. No new foes other than the uh, black helmeted guy, but he just shows up and he just throws a bunch of bullets in different directions. Now, during this boss fight... Um, you will start seeing some of the green grunts will actually start appearing from the sides instead of from the top, like they did in the first stage. So you're going to want to watch the sides, just so that you don't accidentally uh, get surprised. Hmm. Now, this boss is fun. Uh, he's going to be the first major obstacle. Now, he throws out those boomerangs, and if you watch the pattern of the boomerangs, they shoot down in whatever direction he was facing, or whatever direction they were initially going. And then they home. Then they turn towards you, and they go. And they try to go straight at you. The best thing to do is if you just keep shooting in the boss's general direction, and then, uh, yeah, if you keep shooting in the boss's general direction, and just pay attention to where the boomerangs are going, you should be able to take them out in a fairly quick manner. It is possible to pretty much manipulate them into doing into uh, throwing boomerangs faster so that you can take him down sooner but uh, overall he's difficult but he shouldn't be too bad okay well, how can you just shoot him you can't just shoot him unlimitedly right how do you determine when you can hit him next I it there's no visual cue there's no actual proper cue in any way there's no sound or anything of the sort that tells you when you can hit him so basically just keep shooting at him is and really the best thing I can say all right, but now, it, there's some sort of cooldown timer or something. Like you hit him, and you got it's just a certain number of seconds before you can hit him again, or does it have to do with uh, what part of his cycle he's at? It depends on what part of the cycle that he's at. Oh. Uh, 
if you notice, every time that you were able to hit him, it's after he threw a set of boomerangs and before he throws a second set. So if you imagine each set as a pair of boomerangs, he's only allowed to have one pair of boomerangs on screen at a time. If he throws a second set, it actually dis despawns the first set. Um, but it's basically, he, uh, he'll throw the first set, and then while he's moving around, while the first set's going around, that's basically when he's vulnerable. And then after you hit him, that's when he immediately jumps to the, to the left or right is after you've hit him. I see. Yeah, it looks like the spot where the boomerangs stop their initial trajectory and then start to, like, branch off, it looks like that's about when he can start taking damage. But I don't know, it's, it's not, it doesn't seem very consistent to me. It, it really isn't consistent. That's what, so that's why with him, you just want to just keep firing at him as much as possible while, you, while you're uh, dodging his boomerangs. I mean, you can, and I'm seeing, watching Mythical, and I'm seeing that he's getting up right in the boss's face, basically. Not, not like right in his face, but close enough that the boomerangs just go just to his sides, and then he's able to shoot the boss. And, I mean, that's really about the best thing you can do. Okay. Oh, also, I want to point out, you need to equip the smart bomb. It doesn't work unless yeah. you select it. <laughs> it's not just yeah, like an automatic it, item. No, make sure that you actually equip the smart bomb. You can't, uh, it won't be, an, it's not an automatic item. All right, okay. And then once the smart bomb has been used, however, you have to repurchase it in order to get it back again. So to wait for him to strafe? Oh, so when he starts to jump sideways he, is when he becomes vulnerable? No, he actually becomes... It, he strafes after he gets hit. Oh, after he so, gets hit, then he moves. I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, if, so yeah, if, see, if you take a look, when he gets hit, he strafes to the side. I see. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, just as a reminder for everyone, again, if you, you have to purchase the smart bomb from the gun store. And it, however, it comes with zero ammo, so you have to pick up ammo first for it. And then once you've it. got ammo for it, then you, then you can equip it. Yeah, you can't All even right. equip it until you've got ammo for it. All right. But then once you've used it, then you have to repurchase it. Okay, so just don't forget to equip it after you pick up the ammo. Sounds good. Exactly. Okay. All right. So that's the first two stages. You're halfway through the goal. It's uh, pretty, pretty good. Um, so now we're on to the third stage. The third stage, it's going to feature a lot of the same... Uh, foes, same type of foes, except for they're not, now they're all going to look like Indians. And it will introduce a couple new ones, like the blue Indians are, will actually shoot their bows at you, and they will, when they fire, the bows actually shoot at you. They don't just shoot in whatever direction the foe is facing, they actually shoot at you. And then you'll have the strong men and the Indians that just appear and they'll jump, and when they jump they shoot a fireball at you. Um, not all, not too difficult overall. This, this, this stage actually introduces you to two elements, and that is that you're going to start facing more and more foes that take multiple hits to kill, and you're going to be facing uh, your first grunts that will start appearing behind you. In fact, it, right when you reach that first townsperson is when that first grunt is going to appear from behind you, and the problem is that you can only shoot in front of you. You can only shoot up. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, so you have to be careful because now, now enemies are going to appear behind you at the bottom of the screen and you can't shoot back there which means you have to lead them up higher into the screen so that you can swing around and get them. Oh, and Bad Breaks just yes, said very something good in the point. chat. Yeah, so, yeah, Bad Breaks just said in the chat that there's something that needs to be reminded. <laughs> If you end a stage and you have your smart bomb still, you have to re-equip it after uh, when you start the new stage. It does not stay equipped. It it always reverts you back to your normal gun. Aha. Uh -huh. so, so don't forget, re-equip your smart bomb every time. Yep. Re-equip it every time. Oh, okay. So that and then I'm not gonna again, I'm not gonna worry about any of the guns. I've already got a smart bomb. If I go to try to purchase one. It's not going to let me. So. So other than that, the third stage. Um, take a look over here. You got the different enemies. Um, I try to save the, the first pal that you come across. I try to save it for a, um, 
for when the three strong men Indians appear. So it just takes them all out really quick. Um, you are going to come across tomahawk Indians, uh, ones that have tomahawks on them. And the tomahawks act a bit like the boomerangs. Um, they will go out on an initial trajectory and then they will curve towards you. So you are going to want to be careful of that. And then just as a reminder, please make sure that you watch your sides as well, because this is where a lot of uh, foes are going to appear. They're going to start showing up on the sides. Okay. Now, I am going to apologize in advance for a lot of players for this, because I'm, as you guys, I'm, are, I'm sure, are starting to feel. If you spam the screen a lot with your bullets, you are going to get tired quickly. Your, your fingers are going to get a huge workout on this stage. Yeah, I basically so, haven't stopped mashing buttons since I turned this game on. Yeah, you're, you're basically going to be spamming the button. There is, the only auto-fire that's in it is if you buy the machine gun. Now, I'm yeah, in the supply I, store. Uh, I'm... Hmm? Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, when you get a horse, since you don't need the smart bomb equipped, a good way to rest your arm is to purchase the machine gun and go ahead and equip it when you're on your horse. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, the machine, gun's a, machine gun is a good, uh, if you want to save your fingers. Um, like I said, I'm, I am usually don't go with the guns, because I, I want to, I usually try to save my money for a horse. But of course, I've got plenty of money. The thing about the third stage is you're going to come across the supply store, which has the poster, before you can get, before the poster will appear in the stage. So... If you don't think that you're going to have enough time or you don't feel confident enough again to get the wanted poster from its secret location, um, then get the then save up your points and get the wanted poster from the store. I myself, I'm just going to get the horse. Always a good thing to get. Um, Bad Breaks is saying in the chat that the shotgun is also a good thing to use for beginners. If you get tired of mashing, he is right because uh, it has a much larger spread than your normal gun. But again, personal preferences. So. Indeed. Also, uh, the Magnum actually reaches full screen. It's a little stronger, yes. it's a little slower, but it's full screen. Yep, it's stronger, slower, but it goes full screen. And you have much more limited ammunition with it, so... But we're just moving along, taking out some Indians. No offense to our Native American friends. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite punch out levels of racism, but it's getting there. Now the third stage, you'll actually see a third townsperson, and like I said, they will rotate through, so I'm actually going to go ahead and buy the machine gun here, I think. So, just so that I have it for when my arm does get tired. Now, but for normally, those who are wondering... you'd be saving your money for horses in general. If you were bad at this game, you would buy horses every time, probably. Yep. Now, for those who are wondering where the wanted poster is, right after the uh, third townsperson or the second gun store, however you want to remember it, there's this barrel that appears here on the left. It, the wanted poster is just to the left of it. And I just lost my horse. Oh well. So yeah, I'm sure that time, my words and what showed up on the stream really coordinated there very well, but... It's what happened. Again, if, if you're just shooting like a madman and you hear something that sounds like the barrel being a barrel being destroyed, keep shooting, and you should be able to discover what it what it is. It's usually the wanted poster, or it's a uh, invulnerability or a one up. Yep, I think I went right by the wanted poster. Oh well. Yep, so you want you do want to get the wanted poster, otherwise you're gonna be looping through the level and Which means you can collect multiple one ups if you wanna yeah, just keep collecting the, the same one ups. 
Yep. Don't do that, though. Not a good strategy. No, if, if you're in a race, it's <laughs> definitely not a good strategy. You want to get the poster the first time yeah. through. So, I'm... So I'm uh, so I'm up to the boss now. This boss is uh, uh, I said like I said the last boss is where they're the bosses are going to start getting difficult. This guy can actually be difficult. However, there's a couple of little tricks to him that you will make this that will actually make him fairly easy. Uh, the first thing you have to understand is how he works. He just basically walks around and every time that he opens his arms, he's basically going to be shooting out these little fireballs. He'll either shoot out three fireballs or he'll shoot out five, and they they're in a spread pattern, much like a shotgun. So, and and just like with the other bosses, the only time that he's vulnerable is when he's about to fire those fireballs. So you can pump him full full lead as much as you want, but he won't take any damage until he's basically opened his arms. So he's got literally arms of steel there. So. Now one the other little trick is that his fire your reach with your bullets is actually better than his fireballs you can actually hit him with your bullets uh, if you're shooting at the angle and his fireballs won't hurt you so they'll they'll be just out of range and then the other thing that you could i don't know if you just if you look on my screen or if you just mm -hmm. saw it but uh your the angle of his fireballs is a lot more shallow and the angle of your bullets, especially your left or rightmost bullets, is actually steep. Is actually wider, so you can actually stand to the side of the entire spread of his of his fireballs, and you can hit him, and he won't hit you. So actually, standing to his side will actually uh, help you out there. So not only do you have the range superiority, but you also are able to just stand, basically at a diagonal to him and hit him and he can't hit, hurt you. So. Hmm. Okay. And then there, I just took him down. Now, I didn't set up save states like I did on, my, on the last tutorial, so. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think we'll, we'll go through this again at the end because I think it might makes sense to just recap where all the items that you want to get are in each of the levels. Oh, yeah. So you'll see this you'll see this boss again. Oh yeah. And then of course there's the VODs. People can come come back right. and take a look at break it down on a stage by stage thing. Mm -hmm. Alright. So you're moving on to level four. Mm-hmm. And we and we, I, I can wait for you to get up to level four. <laughs> That's alright, go for it. Don't worry about me. You sure? I missed the wanted poster, so I had to replay this level. It's okay. Oof. Well, get over to the left. It's there on your left. I already bought it. <laughs> Yo, you bought it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to buy it. Um, just because uh, if you've got if you got the cash, go for it. Then you don't have to worry about trying to unlock it. So. Well, then I'll just go ahead and start with uh, stage four. Stage four is where the game is actually going to ramp it up quite a bit. Um, stage three, if you paid attention to your to the grunts in stage three, you'll is you'll start seeing a few of them uh, appear from the bottom of the screen. Stage four is where they are going to be almost constantly spawning from the bottom of the screen, especially on the last third of the of the stage leading up to the boss. So you're going to uh, want to be aware of your surroundings completely. Um, so we'll just keep going. Uh, let's see. Hold on. The question was asked for the wanted poster bullet holes. Are they random? I don't know if they're random. Uh, they look like it. That's just. It, it looks like it might be. Um, hard to say. So stage four introduces the ninja grunts, as I call them. And along with the ninja grunts, since you're along a mountainside, you got boulders there coming down the mountain as well. Boulders, you just dodge, stay away from the mountains. Pretty easy to do. The ninjas, you almost want to take the ninjas out as soon as possible because when they appear on screen, after about a second, they will throw a shuriken at you. And then after they throw, if they stay on the screen after that, if they throw, uh, if they stay on the screen after that, it's kind of random whether they're going to throw another shuriken or if they're going to run up and try to slash you. Best thing to do is just like you've done with every other person who opposes you in this game, just 
shoot them down. Mm -hmm. So. And not long after you uh, begin, you'll see your first, your, you'll see your gun shop. If you get anything, if there's anything that you feel like you need to get. I, I forgot that I needed to get a smart bomb, so I, I need to find some ammo in there some. So that I can equip my smart bomb now. And really, you just, again, stage four is the one that a lot of people are going to want to practice. Mostly because of the fact that you can't, you don't want to stay too close to the mountain sides because then the boulders come down at you. You don't want to stay too far to the bottom because the grunts come up behind you. You don't want to stay too far to the sides because you don't want to get too close to the sides because the enemies will appear from the sides. And of course, you got enemies appearing from the top. So, um, yeah, Joni, Joni Dix, uh, and see, I just, I failed to take his advice there. He says, focus your attention on the bullets. Uh, just keep focused on the bullets. That is probably the best thing about this stage. Um, and shotgun is really good for this stage, mostly because it does shoot to the sides. Um, so you want, so if, again, completely up to you if you want to get it or not. For good, for beginners, you may want to get the shotgun. Me, you know, I, I'm, I'm taking the macho route, I guess you could call it, or the true gunman route. Horse is, re again, really good to get. Uh, if you want to get the wanted poster for this one as well, uh, especially if you're going to be focusing on the bullets, that's a good thing to go for. Uh, but as we want to look for the hidden wanted poster, I'm not going to purchase it from the store. Now, something that other people may have noticed is that I don't shoot forward that often. I actually shoot to the sides much more often. That's because you can actually get a longer range shooting to the sides than you can do shooting forward. If you look at the overall range of your bullets, you actually have to be closer when shooting straight ahead. I will shoot straight ahead if it's best for an enemy that's in front of me. Otherwise, I just try to go to the side. Yeah, it's also harder to mash both A and B simultaneously. It really is. So those of you guys who are on controllers, I... Sorry. <laughs> you will probably destroy your A or B buttons with this game. If not both. Oh, and I just died. And I died again, right in front of a 1-up. The good news is if you break a barrel and then you die, the power-ups stay on the screen so you can collect them. Oh, that is nice. Unlike Commando, yeah, unlike other games. <laughs> <laughs> Where you can expose the radio transmitter and then get killed and then have to play the level without warping. Yeah, especially since it moves you forward a little bit every time you die. <laughs> right. It's true. Okay, so when you... Oh, man, I just died. So oh, okay. you're eventually going to get to a point where there are two sets of... There's a set of three barrels and then a set of two barrels. In the set of three barrels, it's a skull, then a pal, and then a skull. You'll want to, obviously, you'll want to get the pal, but this spot is significant. Is uh, this spot is significant because this is where the wanted poster is. It's actually just to the left of the two barrels. So you can see it on my screen right there. The two barrels opened up to be ammunition and a rifle, and then the wanted poster is just to the left of that. So. So now I've got it, which means I can take on the boss, whose name is, well, Ninja. And it's funny because the boss act, the boss actually appears immediately after you get the wanted poster. So if you miss the wanted poster, you've already started to loop. Now, if you look on my screen, I am on my last life, and I have no power-ups whatsoever, so this is going to be interesting for me to go through. Now, Nin Ninja is unique. He Oh, well, I can't show you very well now. I have to play the level again. <laughs> play the level again. 
But uh, just to give you an idea of what Ninja does, Ninja randomly appears and then disappears. And the best thing for you to do is just keep firing. Try to anticipate where he appears. I have not been able to find a, a pattern to him as far as where he appears, where he disappear, when he disappears. And ultimately, the times when he's vulnerable is either right after he's uh, appeared in that poof of smoke or right after he's jumped. Those seem to be that. Those are, seem to be the two times when he is vulnerable. Now, if you do game over, I wish you luck because it also resets your score, which means it resets how much money you had, which means you can't buy anything mm -hmm. at the beginning again. So, um, for those who can practice it with save states or whatnot, practice this stage. Practice it both with coming in with everything working. Practice and practice doing the stage right from a game over, as if you had nothing. Um, it's, it'll probably help you out in the race. Oh, and I just died again. Not easy. No, because without the money, you can't buy a horse, you can't buy a smart bomb, you can't, you can't, you, you don't have your weapons, basically. I mean, I got my machine gun still, but that's because I didn't, I wasn't, it wasn't equipped, Ugh, I wasn't using it when I died, so. Yep. Okay, so then definitely I recommend that people would uh, go look up the maps. If you go on GameFAQs, uh, they'll be... Uh, maps for each of these levels that show you where all the items are. Make sure you figure out where those red pinwheels are because you want all the one-ups you can get. You do not want to have to continue. No, it's... For for this race, the the good news is that you have continues and that, that all you end up doing is restarting the stage, but you restart with practically nothing other than any guns that you weren't using. So you're better off just... Making sure you get you can do everything right the first time through, ultimately. <laughs> now, see, I, I've been killing practically everything that's come my way, and I can't even get a horse. So, that mm -hmm. just tells you how much of a dire strait you're going to be in if you do game over. Yeah, it's going to be on this one stage. death for the rest of the stage. It pretty much is. Okay. And then, like I said, you got the guys coming up from behind you, and if they touch you, you're dead. And so you have to be careful, not only of where they're shooting, but where they're appearing, and... Yep, don't yeah, get against... My... I'm sorry, go on. Yeah, I was already on my last life, so I just already game over, and I didn't even make it through a third of the stage. Yeah, I game over it also. The second time, too. Uh, yeah, and stay away from the right side of the screen, or either edge of the screen, because the enemies will just yeah, spawn them... there. Yeah, just... Like I said, this stage is going to be the worst. A lot of people are going to be continuing time and time again after, um, because of that fact. You got, like I said, enemies are not only appearing from the top like normal, but you've got enemies appearing from the sides and, worst of all, from behind. Mm -hmm. Well, at this point, we're going to just wait for Zyra to get back to the ninja so he can show us how this boss goes. But this is the last stage of the goal yeah, that we're is, playing. Yep, this is the last stage of the goal, and if you believe what I said earlier about fifth and sixth stages being harder, and this is already pretty bad, you can imagine how hard the fifth and sixth stages are. Thankfully, the ninjas are unique to just this stage, so you don't have to worry about them. Ah, got shot from behind. Yeah, it's really hard. But I see what you, uh, this advice about watching the bullets, that's the most important part. I, I agree that that's really the way to go. It's like, don't worry about running into enemies, or don't worry about the obstacles. You can kind of use your peripheral vision to navigate around, but you've got to watch those bullets. Yeah, especially if they get behind you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say that's probably one of the hardest things about this is the fact that you can't turn around. You can't shoot anything side, you know, to the side of you or behind you. So I guess having a was it the shotgun for that purpose would be helpful. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, there we go. I think the grunts that come from behind are pretty much brutal. Yep. I keep that's having That's probably trouble. the best way to describe them. Yeah. 
The ones that shoot a burst of three bullets, I'm having trouble with two sometimes. Uh, they don't. They don't go very fast. They're pretty it, slow bullets. Yeah, and they don't. And those guys only appear from the top, so they're not even too bad. Well, I, actually, no. I, I I take that back. I just had one appear from the side, but they don't appear from behind. Only the green grunts are the ones that can appear from behind you. Yeah, like it I seems... said, they. Go on. Uh, it just it, they, it just seems that they are constantly spawning though, so you have to be ready for that. And they do have very fast projectiles. That's I yep. guess the hard part about them. So, yeah. Good. Good luck to those guys who end in the race, and if they game over on this stage, I I really do feel for you. So yeah, try to come in here with enough money to buy to keep buying smart bombs and horses. Ooh, dead again. Yeah, and I died right in front of the one-up too. Game over, actually, right in front of the one-up. If you're playing, you're playing on emulator, right? Yeah, I'm playing on emulator. Dude, just save it. <laughs> I really should. Yeah, I would just save it every couple screens, just so we can show off the ninja ninja fight. That's what I started doing. This level, yikes. Yeah, I haven't been able to get even halfway through this yet. Oh crap! <laughs> Starting with nothing. I hit the wrong button and I s it loaded it from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! All right. Can you're using FCEUX? Yeah, I am. Myth, can you so, just like drop a save state? I could do that. Yeah. In the Skype forum. Yeah, j drop drop a save state for me. I'm gonna. Oh, that I is. I think I have. I probably have to close this, otherwise it'll be like in use. No, you don't. No, probably. Okay. No, it it shouldn't. And they'll be numbered FC one, FC two, FC three, etc. Oh right, it's not just gun smoke, it's it's O fifteen gun smoke. <laughs> That's right. Uh you wanna get back to I got one right at the ninja if you wanna do that. Yeah, if you got one right at the ninja, that that'd be good. great. And I just saw that Toad uh took out the ninja, so <laughs> Somebody has done it on stream then. That's good. Oh yeah, I've been fighting him a little bit. I actually, I had the Magnum equipped, because I was like, I got all these bullets, why not? But, uh, I think you're limited to the amount of Magnum shots you can have on screen at one time. So, yeah. I actually found it better to just use the regular gun and get kind of like a suppression kind of fire thing going. Oh. Yeah, I found the best weapon for the ninja was the uh, machine gun. Because he spawns and moves so quickly that uh, you need to hurry up and hit him, and the, the magnum's just too slow. All right, so I'm at the uh, so thanks uh, mythical for the save state. So uh, yeah, so when the ninja appears, you'll want to shoot him. And the thing with him is. If you hit, if you're able to get him right when he appears, he'll take the damage and then he'll just disappear in a puff of smoke. So he, you can actually get through this fight without him firing a single shot at you. But if he does shoot, he'll either shoot shurikens or he'll shoot what looks like a big bomb that actually splits into four. And that's what got me the, that's what killed me the first time, and it just killed me. <laughs> and it just barely killed me. Yep. Okay, but the four things always go to like northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest kind of thing, right? Yeah, they always. Yeah, they always shoot at the diagonal, so you don't need to, uh... Right. So stay below the bomb or to the sides of the bomb, and you'll be safe. Yep. And then, like I said, where the ninja appears kind of seems random. I haven't really discerned a pattern to him yet. But at the same time, just watch out for boulders that will fall from the mountain, grunts that will appear from below, uh, and guys that will appear from the top and from the right side. So... There, just got him. Hmm. So he can appear anywhere? It's, it's 
not really like a like he's limited to a certain area or anything like that. He's just wherever. Well, yeah, he won't appear at the bottom like... of the screen. But he won't appear. Yeah, this... he won't appear. He'll, he won't appear in the bottom third of the screen. It'll always be in the top two thirds. But um. Hmm. But so you can take some sauce in that. But at the same time, remember that you will have grunts coming up from the bottom of the screen during this boss fight. So. Yeah, you want to stay low enough that he won't spawn like right on top of you, but you don't want to be so low that if a grunt appears from behind you, you can't get out of the way. Or lure him to the side so that you can then uh, shoot him. Okay. Well, so that's it. The goal ends at Ninja, so yep. not so much. What, so... Yeah, I believe that the, uh, it actually says, uh, I'd, I'd have to look at it, it's exactly when, it's, uh, if, if they actually specified when you can transition to the next game. I don't know if that one's been uh, specified yet. It might not be. But we got, we got to nail those down for sure when the switch over points are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. It's probably either That's, gonna be uh, when it dies or when the wanted when the like wanted poster comes up at the end or something like that. One of those two probably. Yeah, it's probably gonna be one of those two. I wouldn't be surprised if it was more uh, when the wanted poster disappears. Okay. After it's been shot, um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if that's when it is exactly. It. Bad breaks. I'll have to specify exactly. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, Basically, with the ninja, right when he's teleporting, or uh, haven't really, or right when he's about to attack, those are the only times that he's vulnerable. So just like all the other guys, basic Western showdown, shoot, shoot when they're about to shoot you. Okay. So let's see. Would you mind if we ran through this one more time? You can maybe just play through each of these levels and we'll just reiterate yeah. for everyone what they need to remember. Uh, I've got the maps up here as well that I'm going to look at as you go through, but I think we should just stop and point out um, where all the one-ups are, where the horses are, and where the wanted posters are. If you can just like pause when we get to each of those things. Because uh, yeah, I think those like are the things that everyone should memorize the locations of. Know where the free horses are, know where the wanted posters are, know where the one-ups are. And then, yeah. you know... Yeah use the shops to buy smart bombs and and more yeah, horses now, yeah and you'll you if you watched my playthrough of it you will have noticed that the only the first stage do you can uh are you pretty much guaranteed to get a horse before the boss the remaining stages if you want to get a horse you have to loop through the stage because the spot the hidden spawn or where the barrel is that has the uh um what, the uh, horse icon mm -hmm. there after the uh, trigger point for the boss. So you'd have to actually loop through the entire stage again if you want to have a horse for free. So it's just the first stage that you get the horse for free, then stages two, three, and four, you're better off just purchasing the horse from the shop. Okay. Um, so we'll, so we'll, uh, so yeah, I'll, so I'll just play through it and then and you guys as well, and I'll stop at every every time that there's a one-up. Uh, I'm going to throw an in, invulnerability oh, in yeah, there as too. well. Mm -hmm. uh, horse and wanted poster. Sounds good. So I'll just restart this, and... Uh, get this going here. Yeah, I actually have to agree with uh, what's being said in chat. This is definitely going to be one of the harder games in the race. Yeah, I think getting locked up on stage four, just like getting stuck there with uh, starting from continue and not having you know, anything to let you take more than one hit. Especially as difficult as that stage is, that's... Yeah. All right. So, yeah, notice he's picking up, he's shooting all the barrels, every barrel he can, collecting all the stuff in there because you want the money so you can buy things. You want the gun and the boots upgrades so that you'll have several of them ready for in case you die, several of them as backup. Yep.
And I'm skipping the first gun person. Okay, gun nothing store. To buy there. There's nothing we're gonna buy there yet. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you could get the shotgun if you want, but. Oh man. Oh, now sometimes a... now you move at the same speed as bu as their bullets, so y you can actually outrun their bullets. But sometimes you're like me and you don't recognize that there's a bullet right on top of you, and if you stop moving, then you die. <laughs> so that was the horse right there uh, at the oh yeah that last sorry, blue I building. Paused it. Yeah, that last blue building yeah. there on the right. There was a horse in yep. one of those barrels. Yep, it's in a barrel, so that makes it fairly easy to, to find. So you just shoot the barrels and you can find the horse. Alright, now we got another shop. In this one, you can buy a horse if you didn't already have one. There's really nothing you're going to be able to afford. Yeah, you're not going to be able to afford anything other than ammunition. So if you bought the shotgun and you're not finding a lot of ammunition, you can buy some ammunition here. Um, so, uh, the question was brought up, are there a limited number of enemies on the screen? Um, there, due to NES limitations, of course, there is a limit to the number of enemies that can appear on a screen. Uh, but it's somewhere, I want to say it's about eight that it can appear on a screen. Um, if you kill an enemy, just another one will pop up on the screen. Pretty much, I think they spaced it out, they spaced them out enough that uh, it, won't over, it won't low down or lag the game. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of who, how many can spawn where. Okay, so, now right here, when you see these three barrels that he just passed by, that's, and then the blue building on the left, that's your cue for when the wanted poster is going to happen. Yep, so right after the supply store, mm -hmm. that, that's, this is where the wanted poster is, so right there. I just, I just uh, revealed it right there. Right, you shoot the spot right above the barrel and you'll need to shoot it, I don't know, three or four times and then it'll... It, I want to say it's about four times. About four times, okay. Probably so. about as many times as an actual barrel. Yep. And that's where the wanted poster is, so that's important. Now the question was, is it really beneficial to shoot all the enemies? No. I've, okay, so there... There's uh, a, uh, another I'll blue star the question right there. In a second. Yeah, so this blue star was hidden. Mm -hmm. But you saw me, I was shooting fast enough that it just appeared on its own. Um, so that, that's where there's, so there's where an in invulnerability pinwheel is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I have to get around to answering the question, is it worth, is it, worth it? I think it's worth it. Um, at least on these first few stages, it's worth it, mostly because you're building up your money and you're building up your uh, funds and guns and everything. So it, it's worth it. Maybe in stage four it may not be worth it, but at, by that time you're more focused on trying to survive in the first place anyway. So, right after you get the wanted poster, there's a barrel that's right behind a fence. Open that up. There's a one-up. Right in, right in there. Okay, very important. Yep. Now, if you want to, you can save this last barrel that shows up right at the boss screen. So it's right after the one-up. And it won't hurt the boss if you use it because it's a pal. But if at any time there are, gets to be too many enemies, you can always grab it to clear them out. My horse is on its last legs, literally. <laughs> yep. And, and remember just... that the boss is going to stand up sooner if you're close if you're close to him than if you're running away from him. Yep. And I forgot to do that, but that he he uh, moves. He, he stayed down, so he was always close to me, so he just kept showing up. <laughs> so this is going to be the hardest game. That fourth stage is going to kill a lot of people, and their arms are definitely going to be tired. <laughs> Unless they buy the machine gun. Unless they buy the machine gun. Unless they buy the machine gun, and so long as they don't die while using the machine gun. Right. Okay, so now we have a shop, right? And you're going to talk to this guy, I assume. Yep. 
I'm gonna at least get the smart bomb. Uh, if there's anything else that people want to buy, they can get it. I'm probably gonna go ahead and get the shotgun. And what the heck, I'll get the machine gun as well. All right, can't use it yet though, because you gotta wait for an ammo drop. But gotta wait for ammo. And yeah, one of these guys will give you. Yeah, the blue guy will give you an ammo drop. So. So now we switch into smart bomb mode. Yep. Okay, so right after so right after the shop and right after the blue guy appears, there'll be a lone barrel on the right. You shoot it, it's a skull. And it's pretty much the first skull that you're going to encounter. So you can just shoot the pill right in front of the pillar, and there is an invulnerability pinwheel. And if you see the blue invulnerability pinwheel, then you know that the barrel, this is where the two barrels are. The barrel on the right is the extra life. The barrel on the left has the wanted poster behind it. So yeah, you have a lot to do on this screen before it all scrolls past. You gotta get the blue one, you gotta get over here and get the red one up, and then you gotta make your way all the way back over to the left and shoot above where that skull was to reveal yeah. a hidden wanted poster. So and if once you, do you accidentally see those columns... Get a skull, the... Yeah, if you do accidentally get a skull, don't freak out. It's not... It's not gonna kill you. You just okay. lose one of your spare power-ups, that's all. Now, because I bought the guns, I don't have enough for a horse, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But you could buy a horse. If you chose not to buy the guns, this would be a, a good spot to buy a horse, and that'll give you an extra hit that you can take. Yep. Now, sadly, the horse does not go between levels. It does not continue on between levels, so mm -hmm. keep that in mind. If you think you can beat the boss without the horse, or at least reach him without dying, then don't worry about a horse. Save your money. Save your money. Okay. It's also worth pointing out that the same buying the horse is the same as picking it up in terms of like you want to do it at the very bottom of the screen because you have to wait for the animation of the horse running onto the screen. Yep. So it's actually worth it to if you know you're going to buy a horse and you know it's the second towns second or fourth towns person, uh, wait till they're near the bottom of the screen before running into them. You don't have to wait till they're literally at the bottom of the screen because you can't go all the way to the bottom, but, but pretty you know, close. Like, close enough. Pretty close. All right, and there's nothing else of value in this level. It's just boss time. It's just boss time. Now, you'll note that the boss does not appear until you've destroyed all the enemies, so you will want to destroy all foes on the screen before the boss music queues up. There we go. So if you saw what I did there, I was kind of at a diagonal, but somewhat close to him. And if you just... Be careful about your movement a bit. You can actually kind of manipulate him into sliding, throwing, and then just getting hurt, and you can take him down fairly quick. All right. And then don't forget to re-equip the smart bomb between uh, at the beginning of each stage. You get to keep the ammo. It just doesn't equip it, so you have to re-equip yep. And the same goes for if you use the shotgun or machine gun to take down a boss. It will it will revert you back to your normal gun, so you just have to re-equip the other gun. Alright. This level will watch out because the enemies will spawn from the side. Those red guys will just hop right on the screen pretty quickly, so don't get yep. too close to the edges. This is a gun shop. The very first thing is a gun shop. So if you lost your smart bombs, if you used your smart bombs, please buy another one now because you're gonna need it. That extra. You're protection. gonna want. You're gonna want it. Yeah. Yeah. So in my case, I've already got everything. I could get the magnum, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna stick with the shotgun and machine gun. But you'll see that I'm still. I just keep using my normal default gun just because challenge. Mm -hmm. Or I'm stubborn. Your pick. All right. Well, we got a one-up coming up right here. In one of these barrels yep. on the right. Yep. First barrel on the right has a one-up right after the gun shop. And even if you're already maxed out on lives, just go ahead and grab it. It's not going to hurt. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not like you're going to go into your inventory and check or something like that. You know, you should just get it. <laughs> yeah, just get it. All right, now here we have a invulnerability coming up, a blue pinwheel. Yep. In this barrel. It's helpful. It doesn't last too long, but it's still, you know, we no, may as well get it. Seconds. Yeah, five seconds. Yeah, five seconds, but it's still, it's free. It's there.
And then here's the supply shop, so you can get a horse here. And now this is the one where you said you could buy the wanted poster if you wanted to. If you have enough, if you have enough funds, you can get the wanted poster because the wanted poster will appear shortly after this shop. But for me, I because you can get the wanted poster fairly easily, I'm getting the horse instead. Oh, you know. Yep, yeah, horse. Yeah, definitely. If you don't have a horse and you can afford to buy one, spend your money on the horse. I guess I don't see really why you would want to buy the wanted poster on this level, so don't bother. Yeah, once you've practiced the game enough, there's practically no levels that you need the, to buy the wanted poster for. Mm -hmm. you, you can, you'll get the wanted posters from where they are hidden. So It just so happens it's the first point that you could actually aff possibly afford it, so that's why yeah, like it might be tempting to stage, do it. Actually, the stage 2 is where you could actually afford oh, you it. Could? It's okay. only because it's only 20,000, the same as a horse. Ah. But again, it comes down to, did you buy guns, or do you buy the wanted poster, or do you buy the horse? I'm going to be a horse guy, me personally, because I, I don't want to be at one hit away from death for the whole game. Alright, so not a lot. This is a pretty sparse level in terms of power-ups. There's not a lot for a while. No, so you have to work with what you got fairly well. Let's see, I'm good on everything, so yep. I don't need to stop at this guy. This guy's another gun shop, so this is where you would repurchase your smart bomb if you had lost it. Yep. And then just remember, if you have the horse, the horse takes the hits, then the smart bomb. And then right here, right after the uh, gun shop, the next barrel that you see, just to the left of it, is the wanted poster. And I just lost my horse. Oh well. See, I'm playing on a keyboard, and already my left hand's getting tired from shooting. <laughs> okay, now we're coming up in this cluster of barrels. We've got uh, a one-up in here somewhere. The top far barrel? Far right. Ta yeah, the far right barrel. The far right barrel's one-up. Definitely don't miss that. Yep. Switch the machine gun. Give my fingers a bit of a rest. Oh, gotta be careful. I was getting... Oh! Oh, he's dead. And I just died. Still got plenty of lives, though. Yeah. But it means I lost my machine gun. You could equip your smart bomb. Useful. So see, even though I had the smart bomb equipped previously, as soon as I switched the machine gun, the smart bomb got unequipped. So kind of you're trading off their firepower for vulnerability. Yeah, but if you're on the horse, then feel free to do that because you've already got the horse instead of the smart yep. bomb to be used anyway. Yep. Okay. Maybe worth setting a save state here so that if you do have to start the level again, you'll have all your stuff. <laughs> and this is where it just starts to get hard. Yep. So, yeah, and I set the save state. I made sure to do it manually, not accidentally hit the wrong hotkey. Yeah, there aren't a lot of useful power-ups in this level. No. I believe st stage 6 has even less. <laughs> okay, so I lost my machine gun previously, so I'm going to want to get it again. Or you could use this money to buy a smart bomb, as I, I'm going to remind you every time we pass by yep. a weapon shop. Yep, but I still have my smart bomb. In fact, I need to get it equipped. That's right, because it got unequipped after the previous stage, so that's probably the first thing that you should do once you enter a new stage, is just make sure you get your smart bomb back on.
Yeah, you know, so I'm, I tend to hang out kind of in the middle. Right here we have an invincibility, blue pinwheel. Yep. It's not a lot of barrels, so most likely you won't miss it. Well, that ninja almost got me. Now, if you have money, you can buy a horse from this guy. Uh, it's 20 grand. Yep. And if you even have the excess funds beyond that, you could go ahead and buy the wanted poster so you don't have to worry about it later. Since I'm not really going to be encountering any other stores for the remainder of the goal, I'm going to go ahead and purchase the wanted poster. So I have both the horse and the wanted poster now. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this, there's no more stores, and so if you were to game over and get sent back, you wouldn't have the money anyway, so, and you'd lose it. So you may as well just, uh, yeah, buy just that one poster. All. Blow it all on a piece of paper. With an ugly mug on it. Mm -hmm. This part right here is where I really had trouble. Once these green guys start to come up behind you in the narrow space, you don't have a lot of maneuvering room. No, and that's why it's a good thing that that store with the horse in it is right there. Oh, there should be a one up coming up here on the right. Yep. Oh, no, it's invincibility. Wait. Oh. There was an invincibility back there. A hidden one. Oh. Uh, it's okay, oh, though. There went my smart bomb. Alright, but in this this pair of staggered barrels was a one-up. Yep, the one on the right. Yep, that pair of barrels. Don't miss that one up. Very important. And now this very right last there. set of barrels is where you get your water poster from. Yep. Just next to it. Yep. Then I have to clear the screen of the enemies, and then the boss music triggers. Alright, so try to shoot him just as he appears, because you can get your, your free hit, and he'll go back into his puff of smoke if you can manage to do that. Remember, he can only appear on the top two-thirds of the screen. He's never going to appear near the bottom. Uh, and remember that his bombs always explode and send out shrapnel in a diagonal pattern, so standing you know, to the side or below oh. or above one of those bombs is a good idea. Yep. And then just be careful if you get stuck on the side like I was, because guys can still appear on the sides. So yes, cowboys fought ninjas in the old west. <laughs> ah, I was too focused on other things I didn't see the ball. So when a bunch of green guys come up from behind you, you know, in groups of four, five, six, um, I find being oddly aggressive helps. Because if you try to dance around um, back and forth, chances are good you're going to walk right into a bullet. That's what I found. So, like, as soon as I see any kind of opening, I just gun it, like, all the way past them. I don't care how close I get to them, just run past all of them. <laughs> Uh, and get behind them. Oh, come on, I had him. Got him. Nice. So there you go. And that was... I didn't, I didn't time that, but that was probably about a... Because I died a few times there at the ninja. So probably that was about 17 minutes. 17, 18 minutes. Hmm. Nice. Yep, I managed to get through without a continue, which is what I would be happy with during the race. Yeah. yeah I, uh, but I, yeah. I would definitely practice more, because fuck. <laughs> yeah, level four, just pretty bad. The whole thing, I think, needs a lot of practice, especially the boss. Uh, and other than that, maybe the level three boss, just getting used to, you know, getting out of the way of the spread of bullets that he shoots. Um, that could maybe use a little practice. Most of the other stuff, it seemed pretty straightforward. Yeah, like as, like as I said at the, uh, throughout it, stage one is more of a tutorial, just getting you used to the way that the game works. 
Stage two throws a couple little curveballs, but nothing major to really. Th- uh, uh, that's a big threat. But then start it, But then stage three, like I said, boss of stage three is where they really start kicking it up. And stage four, they just really throw you the heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. Any last questions from the chat? I guess Gold Snake wants to know when you change the game. Bad Brace is the, the one that's going to have to answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Did cowboys really fight ninjas in the Old West? I think so. <laughs> according, to, according to this game, yeah. <laughs> that seems to be pretty much it. Cool. Um, just real quick, a general rule of thumb for shmups that I've always found is that when you don't know the pattern that's coming up, kind of moving constantly helps because enemies will shoot bullets at where either in this game especially they'll shoot at where you were so move yeah they will shoot at where you were in, in the... oh, go ahead. yeah they, they're not smart they don't shoot ahead they don't lead the target so and in, in as much as you can especially on stage four try to kite all of the enemies that come out of the bottom to one spot and then Go to the opposite side of the screen and down and kill them. Especially if you have a shotgun, because that'll make that'll help you shoot sideways. It's an easy way to wrap them up and kill them. And uh yeah, like I said, watch the bullets. It's important. If you're really worried about ammo, um, you can uh, like and you see a bunch of green guys are coming up behind you, you can switch to the shotgun then and uh, exactly. try to get sideways kill him and then just when they're done switch back I tried to do that twice and I ended up just dying and losing <laughs> a shotgun but uh, I, I gave myself some better chances and uh, yeah uh, when you yeah stay moving uh, it was good that's a good tip um, yeah uh, just oh, be shmups. mindful of when you change. If you like double back in the opposite direction, uh, you really want to pick your moments when you do that because <laughs> you can totally yeah. double back into the bullets that were fired there. Yeah, but you you will have to do that a little bit because you, there's just not enough free space mm-hmm. to move around constantly in one direction. You are gonna have to double back, so you really just want to try to pick your moments. Yep. 